Good morning, folks. We've got reports on volcanoes, weather, active galactic nuclei, and cosmic dust, including a point on the dust I've waited to read from top scientists for nearly three years. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star very quiet. Bright active region has sunspot decay and has produced no flares. Solar wind here at Earth stabilized without reaching strong telemetry values and geomagnetism is calm as well. This leaves us watching the Earth-facing northern coronal hole as it turns through center disk and should have its solar wind arrive at Earth in two or three days. Hawaii took yet another 5.3 volcano eruption yesterday. We've been at that magnitude for days and days like clockwork. The USGS latest helicopter flyover shows the fissure cone growing in the river of fire heading for the sea. Gorgeous display on the Big Island. Also want to note that volcanoes come to mind any time we get to magnitude 4 in Iceland, always watching for activity cropping up there. Folks, a terrific share from the GO-16 team last night shows a lot more to our community than just the lightning signatures in the clouds. Those lines in the clouds, called whistlers, are what we refer to as penumbral lines, as one of eight critical similarities in structure and electromagnetic behavior with sunspots. They're umbra, penumbra, and nanoflare lightning. Notable that the pulsing and outward waves and bubbling up is easily seen in earthly storms now too via the rapid scan imagery. By the way, the sunspot's big releases a solar flare, but on Earth, we call it a terrestrial gamma flash. Moving on to the top stories, we find California Riverside identifying over 100 planets in space that could have habitable moons. As we look at these images from our Star Water series, know that these worlds are just as likely to exist as moons of an exoplanet gas giant as they are to be planets themselves like with TRAPPIST-1. Moving on next to active galactic nuclei and dust. Starting with the cosmic jets, scientists have discovered evidence of a brand new one at an active pair where they believe the lower mass orbiting star was eaten by the bigger one, and it let out an energetic release. Now let's combine these cosmic jets with that dust. A fantastic study has demonstrated that most of the odd light features seen around these active galactic nuclei are likely the result of dust obscurity, rather than some odd feature of light within the jet. This makes sense, and in this SVS animation we see the kinds of light effects they've noticed, and how the sparse dust around the galaxy does indeed get in the way. Of course, it is our opinion that it does much more than that, including trapping ions, hiding electric current and plasma, as well as itself. And what I've waited years to finally hear just came out of CNRS France, the nation's top physics group. And they say what we've said. You cannot apply generalizations or approximations to cosmic dust because it will ruin your models and analysis, give you wrong ideas about the truth of the cosmos, and indeed, it is so variable in size, composition, shape, and brightness that it strongly affects the infrared signatures of cosmic cloud shine and core light. It is covert matter. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. Promise I got all the titles on there properly this morning. We greatly appreciate your support and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.50 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.